The Human Mind, a powerful tool with near limitless capabilities. It's amazing even to imagine that something able to send hundreds of billions of neurons each and every second lives inside a person's head. Although it slightly resembles a mound of pink toothpaste that's been frozen in an ice cube mold, the human brain is so complex, scientists have been trying for years to replicate its comprehensive power. That's basically what artificial intelligence is, a man-made copy of the human mind. What makes the mind different from nearly every other part of the human body is the ability to continually develop as time goes on. According to an article printed in the National Library of Medicine, the brain begins developing in the third gestational week and may never stop. Because brain development starts so early, it's important to ensure people are taught the right things while they are young. However, that's not always the case. Because children look up to their parents, some parents teach them what is wrong, and some don't teach them anything at all. This can lead to poor development of that child's mind, which could, in turn, lead to major implications down the road. A prime example of this can actually be found in the game of Minecraft, but not in its player base, oh no. This mindset is built into one of its entities. That's right, in this game is a mob that represents a near-perfect illustration of what happens when a child is not guided to do right at an early age. But what mob is it, and why is it such a great example? Keep watching to find the answer to these questions. And before we continue, I just want to say that I actually really enjoyed researching for this video. So if you end up enjoying the result, or even if you don't, please take a moment and hit the subscribe button. As always, it's free and easy, plus you can totally unsubscribe if led to. Thanks for hearing my request. Enjoy the rest of the video. To determine which mob best fills this role, we can take some of its parameters and use them as clues. We want to find a mob that, as a child, displays a lack of supervision and discipline, which in turn lead to an adulthood with a poorly developed mind. So we are looking for a mob with a brain, which will rule out zombies. All other undead mobs can be eliminated from the search as well. And maybe sheep. We are also looking for a mob with child variants, which eliminates many other possibilities. And out of the mobs remaining, only two live a life some may deem to be a poor influence. First up, villagers. Now, I don't know how many of you watching have worked with villagers in some form of survival mode, but most, if not all of those who have, will testify that villagers are a pain to work with. In fact, only until very recently when Java Edition players became able to move boats with leads, was even transporting villagers a chore. Those playing Bedrock Edition have been a bit more lucky. Either way, once your villager is finally in place, now begins the fun part of mindlessly and repeatedly placing and breaking a workstation and checking if that villager has the one trade you are looking for that isn't ridiculously overpriced, all the while getting offered some random trade you don't want at least five times. Eventually though, you finally acquire the trade you were looking for. And after a few days of trading, oh, look at that, the price just got jacked up. You can always zombify the villager to get cheaper trades, but the developers keep tweaking this mechanic, which, overall, has made this tactic worse than it was before. The whole idea of villager trading gets even worse upon the release of the balanced villagers mechanic that limits what a villager can sell based on its home biome. And oh yeah, I have yet to mention, villagers only work half the day. This can lead to impatient players aimlessly spam clicking the nearest bed in order to speed up the waiting process. But you still have to wait after waking up in order for their trades to unlock. Which brings me neatly to my next issue. Villagers trades lock after only two restocks each day. This of course leads to even more waiting around for another day to eventually dawn. And by the way, have you seen some of these trades? Why would you ever pay any emeralds for a piece of leather armor? And this one might be the worst. You pay a diamond to get emeralds. Why on God's green earth would anyone give a diamond, a valuable and non-renewable resource, to get back emeralds? You can literally get emeralds from so many other things. It makes this trade utterly useless and borderline criminal. 
But as absolutely dreadful as villagers can be to work with, they're not completely horrible. In fact, if you really think about it, villagers aren't half bad. Sure, they sometimes have atrocious prices when trading, and sure, they are by no means the easiest mob to transport. But as briefly mentioned before, there are things a player can do in order to lower the price of a trade. And now that one playing in Java Edition can attach leads to boats, moving all kinds of mobs, including villagers, is exponentially easier. Now if only there was a way to get leads without having to risk death entering a swamp biome at night. As far as kids go, the worst thing they do is probably jumping on a bed. But once they grow up, the temptation to start bouncing is gone. Even a nitwit is smart enough not to do it. Actually, the lifestyle of a villager is probably the most sophisticated of any mob in the game. Throughout a village, you will see a wide range of diverse disciplines such as farming, smithing, cartography, alchemy, and yes, even literature. All these trades blend together to create the most well-developed society the game has to offer. So much so that there are those who'd rather see these civilizations fall. Why? I don't know. Maybe it's because villagers are able to do all this without hands? No matter the reason, the reputation villagers have made for themselves as, shall we say, respectable members in the community means that, after further investigation, villagers are not the mob we are looking for as an example of a poor mind development. That leaves just one more suspect. Located deep within the heart of the overworld, found throughout the depths of the endless oceans, and sometimes you can even spot it on the surface, for some reason. Lava, an essential part to Minecraft gameplay, and for many reasons. One such necessity for lava is to generate obsidian, and one such use for obsidian is to create a nether portal. Upon stepping into a nether portal, one enters the dimension our next subject of interest calls home. Piglins. Don't let those floppy ears fool you. The mind of a piglin is dark and warped beyond reason. One such example isn't commonly seen. Upon hunting and killing their fellow nether pig creatures, the hoglin, piglins will dance. They literally dance over top the corpse of their prey. The only other time mobs dance is when a raid on a village is a success and all villagers are slain. This near cannibalistic trait is something that has to be taught to young piglins since, as kids, they can be seen playing with young hoglins. But killing close relatives like this is not the worst aspect of a piglin's mind. It's not even close. As a matter of fact, the worst thoughts in the worst mind in Minecraft all boil down to one word. Greed. Let me explain. It should go without saying, and is well known, that piglins love gold. But how much they love their gold, that's where the problem lies. Piglins will target any player that comes close to them, even if they have a piglin head on. But even zombies do that, and as mentioned before, they don't have a brain. But if that player is wearing a piece of gold armor, then the piglins are fine with that. However, the moment any player opens a chest, they will instantly get rushed by all piglins within striking distance. It doesn't even have to be near or in a bastion remnant. If there is something in that chest, piglins want it, especially if it's gold. They want your gold so much, they'll even barter for it. But unlike villagers who are willing to negotiate a product and a price, piglins do no such thing. They simply take your gold, stare at it for a second, then give you what they want to give you. Additionally, not only do piglins kill and scam for gold, they'll also steal for gold. Give a piglin a piece of gold armor, they'll wear it. If you give a piglin any sort of gold that isn't a gold ingot or a gold block, they'll give you nothing in return. This lust for gold goes all the way down to the children, who will take it away from you if ever given the opportunity. If for no other reason, a piglin's greed and willingness to do so much wrong to gain material wealth, even at an early age, is proof that the piglin has the darkest mind of any mob in the game. I mean, 
who in their right mind would do so much to go out of their way in order to create a huge supply of material wealth? Quick, end the video!